Good morning and happy Super Bowl Sunday. We are so glad that you've joined us this morning for our morning worship experience. And we want to encourage you right now, if you're at home and you have your jersey close by, your favorite team, go put it on. Get in the game with all of us this morning as we go into worship. Now make sure you also share this on all your social media platforms and let others know about the fact that we're here and it's Super Bowl Sunday and we've got a really special day planned for you this morning. Now, make sure you've got your Bible, a pen, a pencil, maybe grab your coffee, gather the family around and get ready to get into the game today because we've got something special that Pastor has prepared for you. Now let's go into worship and let's go in with an expectant heart.
and that more abundantly. Woo, hallelujah. I believe that there are miracles in this house today because God is here, amen. Jesus is here. If you need a miracle, just receive it today. Lift your hands and just receive it today. It's for you. Hallelujah. Moving here in front of me, moving here in front of me. The one who made the deaf to hear is silencing my every fear, silencing my every fear. And I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God. Reaching out. 
together corporately. Hallelujah for healing in this house. I believe in you. We believe God for miracle signs. God of miracles. Come on, last time. Just worship. Take a moment. Come on, take a moment and just begin to worship. Hey guys, so glad you're with us. I know you've already enjoyed the worship from our team and that has allowed you just to enter into the gates with thanksgiving, into the courts of praise with our God. And God says, you know, that we can ask boldly before his throne and provide just really the the things that overwhelm us, just give them to him and he takes care of those things and he gives us the strength to stand on his promises. Amen? Amen, he does. And we know you've been blessed this morning and we've entered into worship together and we're gonna go into the word here in just a second. Pastor has a very special word for all of us this morning. Morning. Um, but we've got a few announcements that we want to share with you today. But first, hey, I think we have to, of course, uh, you know, just acknowledge the 800-pound the elephant in the room. We're, we're <laughs> yeah, wearing we're jerseys. I know they saw you in the beginning, but they didn't, they didn't see me. You know, it is Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday, so that's always an exciting time at the Brock household, especially if our, if our favorite team's team yeah, if our team's is in. in it, which we're not. We're at no, home. They're going to be doing the no. same thing I'm doing tonight, yeah. that's sitting on the couch watching the game. Yeah. But we've got a couple of teams, of course, that are vying for Super Bowl yeah. Champion, and uh, we'll see what happens. I've got a bold prediction by the time we're done. I will predict, not prophesy, but predict who's going to win the game. So we'll get done here in a second. Right right at the end of Right right at the end of off. When I finish offering, I'll tell you. So you got to stay with us. I'll tell you who's going to win the game. Okay, I don't even know this. That's right. That's right. But it's Super Bowl Sunday, so we we, we pull out the jerseys. We have fun. And so hopefully uh, hopefully you're you're out there. Yeah, Yeah. maybe you're wearing yours right there where you are on the couch or. Or maybe you're at work. Hopefully you got to wear your jersey to work or something like that. Wherever you are, we (laughs) hope that uh, that this is blessing you. Hey, consider sharing this broadcast today if you would. Just hit that share button or tab there on Facebook as well as uh, subscribe there on YouTube so you can get all the new content that's coming out. we got a couple of announcements just real quick about what's happening here at Hope and Life, some Mm -hmm. things that are right around the corner we're really excited about. March the 4th, we have our Couples Refresh. That's 2022 Couples Refresh. And we have some amazing guests, and we'll talk more about them here in the near future, but we have some amazing guests that are going to be with us, and so that will be an online event only. So, you know, you can be halfway around the world today, be a part of what we do, and still jump in and be blessed and be encouraged how to be a better husband, how to be a better wife. You know, we have to always continue to be learning, right? That's right. That's right. As well as, you know, you might know of someone that maybe they're just kind of walking through something with their marriage right now or their relationship, and you know that this might be something that would really bless them. It it gives them the opportunity to to tune in and view without having to maybe come out and feel uncomfortable, maybe if they, you know, if they're maybe not church attenders, but they can be a part of our couples event and uh, be blessed by what's going on. Maybe even invite them over to your home. Home, have dinner together prior to, make it a date night, something yep. like that. And then, of course, you guys can all view together. Because a husband and wife should be a good team. That's See right. how we're trying to fold that into everything we're doing today because you got to be a good that team. Was good. That was but, good. Uh, but ultimately, hey, there's been so much that's happened over the last so many years. And really, the, the most significant relationship that's been just really affected by it really has been the husband and wife, yeah. the, the Marriages, marriage relationship. Because yeah. if you can really shake that up, then it shakes up the really core and balance of the family. So yeah. first Friday in March, we're going to have an outstanding event. It'll be online around 7 mm-hmm. o'clock. And so uh, we've really uh, went out and found some specific people that can really, it's a husband and wife team, that are just going to really give us some great knowledge yeah. and information. So you'll see more about that. We'll be talking more about it. But that's March the 4th for our Couples 2022 Refresh. And then I know we're way out in advance, but we got to get the money for this event. Yeah. It's going to be April the 30th. So I know that sounds a little ways out there. And before that, we've got Easter on April the 17th. So we'll be praying about that. Good Friday on April the 15th. 
But on April the 17th, what do we got going on? Well, on April the 30th. 30th, I'm April sorry. April 17th is Easter. See, I'm just checking to see if yeah. she's my teammate. I she's am. got my I'm, back, I'm right? I'm paying attention here. April 30th, ladies, we have a special event just for you. There's a ladies one day conference that will be held in Buford. It's gonna be um, awesome. It's gonna be really great. We're excited about it. Um, amazing musical guests as well as uh, the speakers that are gonna be speaking that mm -hmm. day. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it, but. I just want to make sure you're aware right now because we have to have all of the registrations in by March the 1st. So I have to turn all that in and uh, it's $25 for registration. You can register online um, as well as if you're there in person, you can register in person with us there uh, at the theater. But it will be $25, it covers your lunch and it will cover the whole day um, into the evening. So we're looking forward to it. It's gonna be a great day together. We've got several ladies that are already planning on going. Yeah. So we wanna encourage you, those of you that uh, maybe watch uh, online to be a part. You'll have to be there in person. They, I don't think they're sharing it online. Yeah. It won't be an online event. It will be in an in-person event only. And it's, so. not, it's not an event that we're hosting. It's right. an event that we're attending. So right. uh, that the $25 mm -hmm. pays for the, the meal that day, I think, and some right. food and register registration, but that's where we're not able to guarantee that you can see it online. So right. uh, we hope that many of you at that point will be ready to, to onboard with us, be yeah. in the theater there at AMC, yeah. but then also be out to be a part of this ladies event because it's yeah. going to be outstanding right there at the end of April, end April of the April. 30th, mm -hmm. just a little bit yeah. after Easter, April the 17th, Good Friday, April the 15th. So it's amazing. We're already just really getting into the first little bit of the year. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's moving, moving quick. Yes, so it is. it's time to give to the Lord. And I want to encourage you just to keep the Lord as first in your life. And that's not just as uh, the Jesus that saved you, that God sent to the earth to provide life and life more abundantly, but also that we should honor God with our worship, with our praise, but also with our, our finances. Because yeah. you can never, I've said it a thousand times and probably many more than that, you can never outgive God. And I challenge anyone to say that you can because it seems as every time in our own life that we've honored the Lord with our tithe, but then also even above that with offering, mm -hmm. just like that, there's just some way that we see the Lord. And it doesn't always come back financially. It could be where that there's a, a level of favor or a sense of peace or, mm -hmm. or joy or just something that we needed that we didn't have access to that God really provided and made the way. Amen? Yeah. And He will do it every time. And you know, the Bible says very clearly, it says to, to test Him, to try Him. Just that's right. take a step and try and see what the Lord will do in your you life. Know, that's one of the first, only things, I mean, because the Lord speaks of these other things that we can have and just to have faith. But when it comes to finances, He says, you know, taste and see, just, just right. try it, just check it out. That's right. He literally just says, hey, I double dog dairy just to believe. Yeah. And, and that's our way of saying what the scripture says, but, <laughs> but he says, the scripture says it, just, just try. And I challenge you, we challenge you because we really want to see you blessed. I know God wants to see Amen. you blessed more than we do. Amen. And the way we open up the windows of heaven over our life is to be a part, not only in worship, not only in online connecting and being in the service and hearing the word of God, because the Bible says faith comes by hearing right. and hearing God's word, but then also giving because at the end of the day you don't have enough to take care of everything that you will have need of and so everything you really have and that you've been made steward over is really just seed and so if you hold on to that seed it's going to die if you don't plant that seed and water that seed it's never going to have the opportunity to bring forth harvest and if you do it only on your terms then you're only going to get at the most of what you can cause to happen but yeah. when we trust God put in his hand we sow that seed Limitless are the possibilities of what God can accomplish That's for right. you, for His kingdom, for His glory, but through you. Because the open-handed right. life is what? What God can get to you? God will get through you. That's right. That's and what right. He gets through you, He'll continue to get it to That's you. Right. So let's stay faithful and let's let God just really just continue to bless us in 2022 because the future is bright, right? Amen, it is. The future is. is bright. Let's speak this blessing as we always do during our time of tithe and offering. Come on, say this with us. Upon the, the authority, authority of your, of your word, word, I have given and it shall be given to me. Pressed, pressed down, down, shaken together, together and running over. over. I am, I am a, tither. a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, Therefore the, the enemy is rebuked. The, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. heaven. You, you pour, pour out upon me such, such a blessing, there is not enough room, room to receive it. We, we receive jobs and better jobs, better jobs raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits, benefits and settlements, and estates and 
inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going, and I'm blessed going, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Now listen, I say it, but it needs to be said over and over and over again. Everything we just declared, there's scriptures right there on the screen. So this is not just something we just thought up. Right. This is not some abracadabra moment. This is something that we have drawn right out of God's word. So we've just declared God's word and God's word in our mouth is just as powerful as what? As God's word in his mouth. That's right. So yeah. we need to declare and speak his word. One of my favorite scriptures, I, did, I spoke on it, I think, um, so the last couple of weeks, but it's found there in Job chapter 22 and verse 28. And we declare a thing and it shall be established right. and God's light will shine on our paths. And so and that's what let's we just, did. that's Made right. A declaration. Let's just stay faithful. So guys right there on the screen, you should have seen it already. There are multiple ways to give online, text give, as well as even mailing in. And so mm -hmm. uh, we're excited about what God's going to accomplish through your faith in giving. And now I made a bold statement just a couple of moments I'm ago. I'm waiting. I want okay, to hear Okay, so this. who is going to win tonight? Here's my prediction. It's going to be either the Rams or the Bengals. One of those teams that's are going to not, win. That wasn't, that's not fair. That's I'm, I'm predicting fair. either the Rams, <laughs> that's not the fair. Los Angeles Rams, or the Cincinnati okay. Bengals are one of those teams of those are going teams to win. Are win. So yeah. you can take that to the bank, yeah, all right? Yeah, okay. We're going to talk about now <laughs> God has a plan <laughs> for your life. Hey guys, I'm so excited about this word just because I know it's something that the Lord has put in my heart and I always try to choose something to speak on that is going to relate to uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because honestly, Super Bowl Sunday is something that's celebrated all around the world. Uh, I read not long ago, I don't know how many years ago it was, but it, 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 it was something that didn't catch me off guard, but yet it did uh, because it, it said that Super Bowl Sunday, there is more potato chips and hot dogs and hot wings and Coca-Cola and all those kind of things purchased for this week, this weekend, more than even, you know, some of the other holidays that we know that we really celebrate together and we get together as families and friends. It even, even spent a little bit more than when we have our New Year's Eve get-togethers. Now, that's something that you need to acknowledge. I mean, the commercials as well as the game is going to be watched by millions around the globe. So it's been something for a number of years that I've always tried to pick a theme that works related to football, but is more importantly, it, it, it's what God's speaking to us out of His, His Word. So um, we're going to jump into it today, but this is something too that I believe is going to go for a couple of weeks. And so I'm starting today, I might have said it a little wrong right there when I was making that prediction about who's going to win the Super Bowl, but listen, it's going to be the Rams or the Bengals. I really don't have a dog in the hunt. My team is the Steelers, and I'm wearing a jersey, a new jersey that my kids love me so much they bought me a new Steeler jersey, so I got this Kim Hayward on. and. You know, he's a, he's a good one. He's one of my, one of my favorites. But uh, I want to talk to you today about the game plan. The game plan. And as I said, we might go a couple more weeks on this topic of the game plan. You know, God has a plan for your life. I could speak on this, you know, just for, for hours because I've ministered on this topic or this concept for many, many years. I, I have been encouraged myself through God's Word about His plan for my life. You know, one of the favorite scriptures that I have that I believe the Lord really put in my heart as a, at a significant moment, and it has stayed with me, is Jeremiah, you've heard me say it, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Many people know that scripture. Many people uh, have that committed to memory. But it is something that I know the Lord gave to me at a specific time just to anchor me. And it has stayed with me, not just a scripture that I, that I know, but really a word for me to hold on to through the seasons of my life. And Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know my thoughts and my words towards you. They're good or not evil to give you a future and a predetermined end or a hope. That's the Old Testament. The New Testament, I think, that speaks about God's plan for our life is found in John 10.10. 10. And in John 10.10, 10, it speaks about how that there's an enemy and he wants to steal and he wants to kill and he wants to ultimately destroy or annihilate. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and then have it more abundant. See, God's plan through Christ Jesus is not just salvation. That, that, that's, the, that's the purpose right there. The purpose was Jesus to come to the planet to seek and save that which was lost. But then the plan after salvation is for you and I to operate in an abundant life. 
And that means a life that is so contagious and so just awesome because of God's power and goodness that our life begins to attract others. Because now there's, a, there's an awareness that, man, what's different about you? What's different about her? What, what makes them different? What makes us different is because we have met Jesus, and not just met him, but we've made him king and lord of our life. And that has turned everything around, and where the enemy would steal and kill and destroy, we now have a, a sovereign king that's over our life, Jesus over our life, that says we have life, but life to the abundant. It's just where the Old Testament says, you know what, we have someone that has good thoughts towards us, plans prepared for us, a hope already determined for us, and it's just not somebody with good intentions. Everybody's got a nana or a mama or a, or a grandparent that's got good intentions for you. Come on, you know, they, they love you like nobody. But God is great and awesome, and when he puts a plan together, when he has a predetermined end for you, when he says we have life and we're able to live it to the fullest, then listen, that's something that you can take it to the bank, that you have that ability, you have that inheritance through Christ Jesus by the power of our Heavenly Father. And so I'm talking today about a plan, the game plan. Now, do you today know that God has a plan for your life? I just gave you some scripture that should encourage you to believe on that, but I'm going to take the next so many weeks, we're going to talk about God's plan that he has, the game plan. Now, these teams this, this afternoon, today, here for Super Bowl Sunday, they've got plans. They're not just going to show up and just play football. Um, they've been working now for multiple weeks after they both won the championship of their conference, the NFC championship conference game won by the Rams. The Bengals won that AFC conference championship game. When they knew that they were going to represent their conferences in that Super Bowl game in Los Angeles, they began from that very moment to begin to plan and began to prepare a game plan so that they could hopefully, their desire is to overwhelm and defeat their enemy and be the one last champion, the last team standing. Now there are three parts of the football game that they need to win. They need to win the offense, the defense, and the special teams. And each one of those disciplines require uh, an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, a special teams coordinator with the overall coach and the assistant coaches, and then the players putting their input in, and they develop a game plan, and then they begin to practice and practice and practice and practice, and then we're going to see where it's going to be all put on display when the Super Bowl starts off, gets going. You know, some coaches even at times script plays like 20 or so offensive plays so that it just allows their offense to find a sense of continuity and know that no matter what happens, we're going to do these plays just like this. And there seems to be a, a predictability that they believe will lead to success. So uh, for some of y'all that could care less about football, maybe you've already zoned, zoned out. Other use that are football folks. I think I got that right, everything that I just said. I, I just know that the two teams that are showing up tonight, they're excited. Their fan base is excited. The whole world's going to be watching. We're going to be watching the commercial and the game and eating hot wings. But the teams have really put in the work because they have a game plan. And they want that game plan to be something that they not only, it's just second nature and they operate in it. Now that's what I'm using today is just an, an idea of, look, if, if the Bengals and the Rams can have a game plan, can I tell you the God of the universe has an amazing plan for your life? John 10, 10 speaks of it in the New Testament. Jeremiah 29, 11 speaks of it in the Old. There's a plan. But let me just give you some scripture I think is profound. I'm going to read it here. It's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. I'm going to read a couple of different translations because I think each translation just kind of drills down and makes even that much more kind of uh, easy to understand and, and to chew on and digest. Ephesians, Ephesians 1 and 11 says, In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according, hear this, to the counsel of his will. Now, uh, that you might not, now what does that mean? Let me just kind of drill down now. The, the counsel of his will, that means God's eternal, unchangeable plan. That's the game plan, the plan. Counsel of his will is the eternal and unchangeable plan. Now, in the New Living Translation, here's what that last portion says. It says, God, that he chose us in advance and he makes everything work according to his plan. Are you getting this? See, God has a game plan 
for you and I. We're a part of his overall plan that God is putting together. God is in charge. And he's saying here that he chose us in advance, and now he's making everything work according to his plan. Another translation says it this way, that God always does what he plans. Always does what he plans. And in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13, he says this. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Now, here's why I say that, because the big idea, kind of working through this, the game plan is, is that God determines the end results. God starts from the end and then heads back to the beginning and then works towards the conclusion that he has already established. Did you hear that? I, I don't want to confuse you. I don't want that to somehow go over your head or somehow get caught in what I just said. What I said was this, is that he already determines the outcome. Then he goes back to the beginning and he causes everything from the beginning to work towards that ultimate outcome that he has already established. That's why the word says once again in Revelation 22 and verse 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. God has already, already put the conclusion on the plan. He's now at the beginning working you and I towards that conclusion so that we can fulfill God's purpose and his plan on the earth for his glory. So uh, that's why it's easy to just grab a hold of what Ephesians 1 and 11 says. God always does what he plans. That God chose us in advance. Ephesians 1 and 11 again, making everything work according to his plan. God always does what he plans. Can I get an amen out there if you believe that God has a game plan? Because he does. Another scripture that talks about God's plan in our life and how that we're invested in a part of it is Philippians 1.6. It says this, it says, God is the one who began this good work in you. And I'm certain that he will not stop before it's completed. See, God began a good work in my life and in your life. And it's to be threaded into the plan that he has, not only for you and I, but then also all the body of Christ. And it's all working together towards the conclusion that God has already predetermined. We've been chose in advance to be a part of this. He's the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, the first and the last. He establishes the outcome and then begins to work towards it. God has a plan. Now, in the midst of this, so that we're able to stay on track? How how do we make sure that we're in the plan? Always keep your eyes on Jesus. If I can just say anything, if if you don't get anything else from what I say, this is what you need to take away today. Always keep your eyes on Jesus. Because if your eyes are on Jesus, then you're following, like tonight, the, the players on the field. They have a coach on the sideline. But on the field, they also have captains, and the quarterback on the offense is normally the captain. The middle linebacker is the captain there on, on the defense, and, and then there's always a, a captain on the special teams that pulls things together. These individuals are, are vital. Well, Jesus is our captain. He's the one we keep our eyes on. He's the one that we follow. He's the one that leads and is our ultimate example. He's the one that already showed us the example of how he submitted his will, and followed the plan of God. There was a time and moment there in the Garden of Gethsemane before the cross where he was saying, let the cup pass from me, or saying, you know, I know there's these plans, God, that you have, and it's going to require me as the Son of God, Jesus, to be crucified, but the pain and, the, and all that was going to go with it, can this cup pass from me? But ultimately, Jesus, being that example, we keep our eyes on him, said, but not my will, but Father, your will be done. Jesus is the example. Keep your eyes on Jesus. That is the way to stay in the plan that God has for you. See, John 5, verse 19 through 20, in the New Living Translation says, The Son can do nothing, no thing, not one thing. The Son can do no thing or nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything he's doing. See, Jesus took time to not only follow and keep his eyes on his heavenly Father and be an example for you and I because he's the captain. He's the one we're following. But also he was one that was willing to say, Lord, I, what do I need to do? He, he says right there, John, the Gospel of John tells us that he did nothing by himself. He was always saying, 
Father, what should I do? How should I do this? Jesus took time to pray. See, when you and I pray, we're asking God that our steps be ordered and that lined up right with him so that we can make sure that we're following the plan that God has for our life. Can I tell you, you're not just some random something out there watching in just some random world of where we're somehow just, you know, um, submitted just to random things taking place. No, our God is very specific. Our God knows your name. The Bible says he not only knows your name, he knows the number of hair upon your head. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. He sent Jesus, and Jesus willingly came just for you and for me. And because of his death, the death of Christ, his burial, but then resurrection, now you and I have life and life more abundantly. So it makes it easy to keep our eyes on Jesus and then pray to our Heavenly Father that we stay in lockstep, that we stay in line with his plan for our life. See, if Jesus, as the example and the captain, took time to pray, Often you'll read the word in the Gospels where it says that he went away and found a place to pray. Or there was even moments and times that he, even in the midst of his busy schedule, doing God's work. But he never once got busy doing the work of the Lord, but forgot the Lord of the work. Never once. He stayed faithful. He stayed focused. He prayed. Busy schedule and all. He always asked God for guidance and direction. There were even times he spent the whole night praying because he knew there was a power in being connected to his heavenly Father. Jesus is the one that lived out the plan of God on the earth, and now we're blessed because of it. You and I now need to make sure that just as he kept his eyes on his Father, we keep our eyes on Jesus, and God will, Jesus will always direct us where God is guiding. Jesus said that no good thing, no good thing, no good thing was, was there going to happen unless he was willing to always follow the Lord. Jesus said no to good things. Get this, no to good things so he could say yes to the things that God has for him. You know, sometimes the good gets in the way, not just the bad, but the good gets in the way of the great things that God wants to accomplish in your and my life. But because Jesus was following our Heavenly Father, he said no to not only the bad, but also to the good so he could do the great things that God had for him. Can I just tell you today that hell hates, the enemy hates, the devil hates, your adversary, the devil. 1 Peter 5 and 8 said, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Hell hates when you and I stop and pray and refuel and rechart our course according to, come on, God's plan for your life. Man, I just challenge you right now to share this sermon if you haven't yet. I challenge you right now to respond if you're on Facebook. Respond and say, man, amen, I'm believing that God is speaking to me today because he has a plan for my life. And by you listening and participating in this sermon today, you know what you're doing? You're, you're angering hell. You're, you're, you're making the enemy frustrated because you're hearing that God's got a plan for your life and it's good and not evil, but it's to give you a future and a hope. You're realizing you're not just on this earth taking up space, but God has a plan to order your steps and to lead you and to guide you for his glory. Man, you're here with a divine purpose. Every one of us have Little thumbprints here that are very small, but they prove to us, just like snowflakes, none of us are the same. There's no snowflake that's the same, and there's none of us that are the same, and our fingerprints are all uniquely different. Isn't that mind-blowing? Each one of us have that individual just stamp on us that God created a special not robots, but special. And because he's made us special and he's put us here on the earth, there is a plan that we have that he's laid out before us. And when you and I stop and refuel and rechart our course according to God's plan, man, the, ang the enemy is flipped on his lid. He has literally frustrated because the enemy wants to stop you from having the game plan manifested in your life. He wants to keep you from receiving salvation, and if he can't keep you from salvation, then he wants to somehow keep you from fulfilling your divine purpose. You are a child of destiny. You are a person of purpose. And the enemy wants to somehow just stop or slow up or keep you from being able to be all that God has intended you to be. You know, here's what the devil does. And it's a lot like, you know, the opposing team on a football field and the crowd, you know, of, of an opposing the opposing team's crowd. Oftentimes, here's what the devil would love to do or in many ways want to cause in your life. He wants to turn up the noise. He wants to create the feeling of hurry. And he wants to somehow cause the crowds to influence or manipulate you. See, noise creates confusion. On the football field, when the noise gets loud, it confuses the offense or the defense because they can't communicate effectively. 
when there seems to be a hurry or a sense of anxiety or impatience. Sometimes they don't have the plan together or they're not in the right kind of position or formation and then there's a penalty on the field. And then when the crowd influences and gets involved and is so loud, it can even cause where they're not able to, the offensive side, unable to really get the team together and get the play going in time before there's a penalty because they've somehow mismanaged the clock. You know, the enemy works the same way in your and my life where he wants to create confusion, which from noise just turned up in our life. He wants the hurry of life to create anxiety or he wants the crowds, people around us. He wants us looking at people and not looking at Jesus. He wants us looking at the issues and not keeping our eyes on our captain, which is Jesus. Man, to stay in the plan that God has for your life. Get your eyes on Jesus because Jesus always kept his eyes on the Lord and we followed that example. But if you get your eyes on people or on the crowd, then you're going to be manipulated. And ultimately, the noise and the hurry and the crowd creates fear. And that's how the enemy wants you and I to operate. He wants you and I in fear, full of fear, because faith is what pleases God. But fear is what allows the enemy to dominate and keep you and I from being all that God has called us to be. You know, a couple of ways that I like to say what fear is. You know what fear is? Fear is faith in the wrong thing. Did you hear that? Fear is faith in the wrong thing. The devil wants you more fearful of the mountain than to have you full of faith that there's a mountain moving God. He wants you so full of your maybe health concerns and issues instead of you having faith to believe that we have a healer through Jesus that paid for all of that on the cross. He wants you more fearful of the financial struggle and things that aren't working and the potential of what will not work out in your life than to see that Philippians 4, 19 says that, that, that our supply comes down from our Heavenly Father. See, you got to fight past that. The devil tries to keep you engaged in, and this isn't, I don't think it's the correct word, but I like the way to say it. It says it this way. He wants us tangled up in muchness and manyness. Now, that's M-U-C-H-N-E-S or M-A-N-Y-N-E-S. Muchness and manyness. Why? Because it keeps us hurried and anxious. It keeps us worried about other things, the crowd, other than what matters to our God. It keeps us at a point where the noise is so loud in our life, we're not able to really make out the voice of the Lord, see? When we hear the noise, the tick, tick, tick of time ticking away, we, and we feel the hurry, hurry, hurry as the crowds tell us that time is running out, or we don't have enough money, or we're, not too, we're, not, we're too much of this, or not enough of that, ultimately what happens is everything's trying to say this to you, that how can you just stand there and not do something? You ever felt that inside of your spirit? You ever felt something telling you, how can you just stand there? Hurry, fix, fix it. Things are running out. How can you just stand there? And the enemy wants you and I to act out in our own ability and in our own power. Let me remind some of you out there today, God's got a plan for your life. And the plan is to follow God. And then God will make a way where there is no way. So when you hear something in your heart or in your ears causing you to feel full of noise and hurry and anxiety and frustration and being manipulated by your situation. Instead of giving in to that thought of, shouldn't you just do something? How can you stand there? Don't just do something. Instead, I'd say this, don't just do something, stand. Don't just do something, stand. Stand on what? Stand on the promises of God, believing today that God has a plan. I beg you, don't just do something because you don't know how to handle life. Mm -mm. I challenge you, don't just do something. Stand today. Stand. Instead of trying to figure it out, trust God. Faith. Have faith in God. See, God's game plan today is to promote you, is to bless you, is to strengthen you. We must get away with Jesus and pray. Come on. We're going to pray before we're done today. We're going to pray. We've got to get away. We've got to pray and ask Jesus Help us to hear God's plan for our life and that we're submitted to it, that we're we're not wanting our will, but we're wanting the will of our Heavenly Father through Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit to manifest in our life. But can I tell you, that's not going to keep the voices from screaming in your ears saying, how can you just stand there, do something, trying to have you act out in your own ability? The Holy Spirit's saying, stay and stick to God's plan. The enemy's saying, fix it. You can do something. Hurry. Be anxious. Figure it out. The devil is a liar today. There will be a thousand voices that will say to you, don't do this or do do that or hurry here or fix that. And ultimately, the Bible says that there's going to be vain imaginations and thoughts that are contrary to God's word. 
But we have to pull those down and say, let God's will be accomplished in our life. Ultimately, these things can cause us to be weary. But here's what Jesus says. You know what the, the captain says? You know what, what, our, what, our, what our leader says? He says in Matthew 11 and 28, he says, Come to me, all you who labor, all of you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, today, instead of just, you know, feeling like you got to figure it all out, let's just rest and trust God. Take that deep breath, pray, seek his face, and then allow him to lead us forward. You know, when I, I read in the Bible, I read about a man that was full of demons. Uh, the Bible talks about him, calls the demoniac. And when Jesus asked the name of the demonic spirit that was controlling this man's life, and as it controlled this man's life, it destroyed everything. He was out of his mind, literally running and living in a graveyard, the word says. And people tried to constrain him and hold on to him and, 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 and try to help him, but he would break free of them. Even if they tried to chain him, he'd break free. And he, he was tormented and he tormented others. And when Jesus stepped onto the shore off the boat, the Bible says this man came running and Jesus said to him, what's the name of the demonic spirit? And they said, legion, meaning many. You know, the enemy drove that man into the tombs, into the cemetery, drove and tormented his life. But the Bible tells us that when Jesus was beginning to start his ministry, he felt the Holy Spirit draw him into the wilderness. You know, we have a heavenly father. His plan is to you would be at rest and to be drawn by the Holy Spirit. But the world... And more importantly, the enemy, the devil, there is an adversary that you and I have. He wants to drive us so that we're so full of hurry and anxiety. Noise is cranked up in our life, looking to figure out what everybody's thinking, that we really can't keep our eyes on Jesus. Come on, keep your eyes on the captain, on Jesus, so that we're able to really have God's plan, because he's got a plan today, ready for you and I. Can't have that plan accessed in our life. See, Jesus teaches us a couple of things, and I'm just going to finish with just a couple of points here. But first and foremost, here's, here's the first point. Here's one of the things that he teaches us by his example, how he was drawn by the Holy Spirit, led by the hand of God, not driven, somehow manipulated, and full of anxiety and, and pain. No. Number one, we can be following God's plan and still be overwhelmed. Now, what, what are you trying to say there? You know, Jesus was at rest and following the plan of his father, but there were mo moments and points where he was overwhelmed. What, what do you mean by that? Let, let's, let's think about the ultimate conclusion to the life of Christ. See, he came to die for you and I. That was the plan from the beginning. He, did, he came to be born and to, to live, but ultimately his purpose was to die for your and my sin. Jesus had a moment of being overwhelmed, but even though he was in the perfect God, plan of God, he was following God's plan, there was still a feeling of being overwhelmed. See, under the weight of our sin, Jesus cried out while hanging on the cross in Matthew 27 and verse 46, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt overwhelmed. And so even when I challenge you to say, hey, step towards God's plan, keep your eyes on Jesus, follow that plan. I'm not telling you that there won't be moments where you feel overwhelmed or your weakness is really on display and you realize, man, I, I don't know if I can do this. Jesus was at that point, and he shows us the example because he's the captain we keep our eyes on in Matthew 27 and 46, where he said, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, when you feel as if you've reached the end of the rope, boy, I love this, tie a knot and hang on, man. If you're at the end of the rope today, tie a knot and hang on, because if we do what Jesus did, which was pray, as, just as Jesus said, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you know what? The word says in Luke 23 and verse 46, then he prayed, Father, now into your hands I commit my spirit. We can admit that there's overwhelming moments even in the midst of God's perfect plan for our life, God's plan for our life. But at that moment, instead of giving up, even though we feel overwhelmed, what we say is, Father, into your hands, I, I just put all this situation. What's bigger than me, it's not bigger than you, God. I give it to you. See, in the midst of God's plan, when you're overwhelmed, turn it over to him and trust him to do what you cannot do. God will let you and I face those moments where we realize we can't do this. But you know there's a scripture, 
Philippians 4 and 13, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because when you hit that moment where you know you can't go farther, further, you're so overwhelmed, and then you say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, then God makes the way. And you know it was only by the grace of God, only by the grace of God, as God opened the door. I love in Psalm 27 where David said this, if it had not been the Lord on my side, where would I be? And in verse 14, he said, wait on the Lord. And again, I say, wait on the Lord. Can I tell you, our Captain Jesus is an awesome, awesome elder brother. He has been an amazing example for you and I. And even when he was overwhelmed, fulfilling his purpose, at that moment, he didn't give up. He didn't quit. He said, Father, into your hands. Now I commit my spirit. It's finished. It's done. When we wait on God, we stay. Come on. Can you say it out there? I'm staying in faith. When we stay in faith and we wait on God to work his plan, God's game plan for our life, I know, I believe it. he will bring us into victory every time. Every time. There's no way that you and I can lose because we've already won through Christ Jesus. Because I already told you what, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The conclusion is already set. He's just moving you and me towards that conclusion and making all of it work together because his plan always works. God has a plan. And i got more to say. I've got so much more, but I'm going to stop right here. Second point, when God doesn't answer, we must practice standing on the promises God gave us in his word. Not always when we ask, always when we ask, is God going to immediately respond? He is not a genie in a bottle. He is not submitted to us. We're submitted to him. The Bible says if we resist the enemy, submit to God, then the enemy flees from us. It doesn't say that when God submits to us, then the enemy flees. No, he is not some, some toy or something that we control. He's not a pet that we have. God is sovereign. He is the big G-O-D God, and we are his children. So when he answers... It's the right time. He's never late. Waiting on God is never wasted time. Come on, can I get an amen? But when we don't hear from him immediately, and there'll be times like that, what we must do is we must stand on the promises, practice standing on the promises. You know, the game tonight, there's going to be some things that are going to turn different ways, and it's not going to work out the way the teams think it's going to work out, where they got to stick to the plan. When things aren't working the way we want, we got to stick to the plan. The way we stick to the plan is we stand on the promises of God. When God doesn't answer or the plan seems to not be working, practice standing on the promises that we have in the Word. A couple things, we're done. Just like this. What about when you can't figure things out? Proverbs chapter 3. This is my mom's favorite couple of verses. Verses 5 and 6 says that He will direct our paths. That's a promise. That's a promise. So when we can't figure it out, I can stand on the promise. God, I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure how it's all going to work out. But Father, I stand on Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, that you're going to work it all together and you're going to direct my paths. What about when I'm weary and I'm tired? I read it just a moment ago out of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. We can read on even to verse 29 and verse 30. But when we're tired and fatigued, and I tell you, I know there's a lot of you out there. I, I feel it as well myself. The Bible says that he will give us rest. I just read it to you a moment ago. Now, here it is again. When we're tired, we find, and not just sleeping rest, but, but even more than that, a peace that surpasses understanding, a deep rest to your soul, a strength that comes back to you that only God can give. But what about when, when I, I, I'm unable? Man, I face things on the regular that I am unable I can stand on the promise found in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 that says, I am able through God. Do you get this? When we don't know what to do, stand on the promise. When the plan doesn't seem to be working, stick to the plan. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Stand on his promises. What about when I can't do it? I quoted it already a moment ago, Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't imagine how these things can work out. Stand on Philippians 4 and 19. He will supply according to all of his needs. What about when I am scared to death? 2 Timothy 1.7 says he's not giving us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I could give you so many more scriptures to stand on. I'm just challenging you today to remember there's a plan. There's a plan. We've got more. We'll talk more about this as we go further in the rest of this month. But God has a game plan. Jesus is the one who fulfilled the plan so that you and I now could have life and life more abundantly. If today you're sitting out there and you'd say, you know what, my life feels random. It feels like it's a mess. Um, I'm not sure the direction. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to handle what I'm in now. I'm, I just, I'm not sure. You sit there un unable 
to really figure it out. 30 plus years ago, I gave my life to Christ, but I was in a situation like the way many of you feel. I, I'd grown up in church, but I never really had given Jesus my life. But I was living in the world and the world was turned upside down and I didn't know how to handle life. But I gave my life to Christ Jesus and when I did, can I tell you, things changed in me. My world didn't immediately change, but I was changed. And the Jesus inside of me began to work on the world outside of me and my decisions became now decisions that were ran through Jesus and the Holy Spirit and it began to reshape my world where that now I'm in God's plan. Doesn't mean I don't find moments of being overwhelmed and it doesn't mean times that I want the Lord to speak. I, I don't hear him speaking, but when I'm overwhelmed, I gotta make sure, Lord, it's yours. I just put it all to you. And then when I don't always hear what I'm wanting to hear or I'm waiting to hear from the Lord, I stand on his promises and I wait for his perfect plan to continue to operate because we stick to the plan that God has for us. And God says, my plan is good or not evil to give you a future and a hope. His plan is to give you life and life more abundantly. God has a plan, but it begins by not only speaking and saying, but also just giving your life to Christ Jesus. Today, I wanna to challenge you. Would you pray this with me before we finish? Just, just follow me in prayer, and we never want to finish without giving you an opportunity to say a prayer to the Lord where you dedicate your life to Him. Just say this with me. This is what I did so many years ago, and I challenge you for the first time, some of you, or maybe if you've been in church and been around it for a long time, but you know you need to reaffirm, reestablish Jesus as the source of your strength, the captain of your life. Say this with me, say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I trust you with everything. Forgive me my sins and now establish in my life a new walk and a new relationship with you. Say this, I'm following your plan, Jesus. I'm yours and you're mine. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, then I believe those that are not saved, you're saved today. Those that maybe didn't have Jesus first, now he's back as number one. And those that maybe, you know, you just been going through so much, you've got Jesus in your life, he's number one, but you've been going through so much, I believe once again, you're, you're aware and awakened to the perfect plan that God has for you. God has a game plan for you. So, check this out. There's gonna be a team that wins tonight, and I can predict it's gonna be either the Rams or the Bengals, right? But I got better news. You, through Christ Jesus, have already won. That's something that I can definitely take to the bank because with him, we have life and life more abundantly. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine on you. He be gracious to you. Lift his countenance upon you and give you peace and cover you with the name above every other name. That's the name of Jesus. And Jesus gives hope for today and life for tomorrows. God bless. Goody's gonna give you some information here at the end. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our morning worship experience. Super Bowl Sunday is a special Sunday, and I know that Pastor's word this morning was just impactful to your life, to know that God has a plan for you, and He wants you to get into the game. And if today you did make that decision to follow Him, make sure that you contact us. There's some information at the bottom of the screen, and we would love to get in contact with you and put some information in your hands that will just bless you and enhance this new walk that you're taking with Jesus. Now, until the same time in the same place next week, make sure you're following us on all of our social media platforms, as well as make sure you're looking for us in our midweek meetup. Until then, remember church, God's game plan is all about our future and our future is bright. <laughs>